here we go. It's Monday. This is Mike Lodge. I am the business advisor, and I'm glad you've joined me. Hope you had a good weekend. It was a uh, semi-rainy weekend here. Rain just a little bit yesterday too, but Saturday, Friday, and Saturday we had nothing but rain, and it came down in torrents, and then it kind of simmered off, and then yesterday we just had probably about an hour worth of rain. But it's, uh, what, what's the temperature now? It's about 74 degrees, and I looked at the weather and it said it feels like 74, so there's not that much humidity, which surprises me. We're supposed to get up to 90 today. So, it was still below the uh, month of August average, which is normally about 73, I mean not 73, 93 degrees. So we're going to be at 90, so we're 3 degrees under. So far, July and August, we have been under the state average of, uh, of uh, hot, 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 hot weather. It's always hot here during the summertime, so we're just kind of used to it. And, you know, summertime's are always hot. Some days you'll have nice, normal days, nice, nice days you can go out and have fun. And then other days, it's screeching hot. That is life with Mother Nature. So last week... We talked a lot about the unemployment numbers and the CPI numbers and all that sort of stuff that engulfs our economy. I've got to tell you, I you know I've told you this several times that I don't believe in the unemployment numbers. And people have said, "Well, why don't you why don't you believe in them?" Well, I'm going to tell you why. One, if you look at the history of the CPI numbers, I'm not CPI, but the unemployment numbers of the jobs report. For six months, we can't say seven months because we don't have July number out yet, but for six months, every single month has been downgraded. It's been adjusted. So all those jobs that they said that they had produced, they always downgrade them and reduce the amount of jobs that were actually done. Because what happens is, that the unemployment numbers are, some of those numbers are guesstimate numbers. I'll give you a good example of what a guesstimate number would be, or an estimate. But I say guesstimate. If you look at what is called the, um, it's called the birth-death number. And that encompasses the number of businesses that were started and the number of deaths of a business going out of business. Good example, yellow trucking, 30,000 jobs. Um, uh, well, uh, CVS, another 5,000, and there's other companies out there. If you look at also a company going out of business is um, the Christmas tree, officially gone. It's officially gone now. But when so what they do is they adjust those numbers. Those are the biggest numbers because what they're doing is they say, okay, we've got so many new starts, it's creating so many jobs. But it's not. It's not creating the jobs that they are forecasting. So every month they have to go in and adjust the numbers downward. It's a Mickey Mouse type of unemployment number. Because they estimate it to be great numbers, and then they have to reduce the numbers, showing that the jobless jobless claims and also the number of jobs created actually went down. And we have had downward downward numbers. So that's why I I think we have to look at the unemployment number, the jobs report, a different way. I think we have to sit down and reanalyze how we're producing that report because right now I don't think it's a clean report. So I think what's happening is that the president comes out, he brags about it, and then the next month it gets adjusted down. But no one ever talks about the adjustment downward. It's always about, oh, we're creating these many jobs, and then the next month they're gone. Several jobs are gone. So don't ever believe what the president is telling you. Don't ever believe what the Treasury Department is telling you because I'm telling you those numbers are adjusted and they are also estimated and they're not. a lot of that numbers are not real numbers. So we have got to take a better look at these unemployment numbers because they are just not where they should be. They're not reporting good data. And that's what happens. Dad, bad, bad, <laughs> bad data in, 
bad policy out. And that's what's happened with, with our economy. I am concerned about the unemployment numbers because I really believe that they're going to get worse. And I also believe, based upon a report today, that the uh, inflation numbers are going to get worse also. In fact, there's a report that came out today, and the title of it is July CPI numbers, July inflation report, may hand the market a harsh dose of reality. Now, I've been telling you this for months, that this, uh, for weeks, I mean, that this inflation number is going to start rising. And why is it going to start rising? Higher gas prices, which means that it's going to cost more to get produce and goods to stores. It's going, it's, the oil prices have gone up. I, I monitor my oil prices here every day, and now we're at three, almost 370 here in here in South Carolina. Some three fifty nine, but up to three seventy. <clears throat> in fact I saw one at four dollars. Now that I did not like. But gas prices are going up, so that is increasing the cost of our goods, cost of our food. The other issue is that you have a large trucking company that employed thirty thousand people that has gone out of business. Now, who's going to pick up the slack? So that means that since we have a less competition in trucking, because a major player is now dead, that's going to drive the trucking costs up, the transportation costs up. So we have those two things coming. And then also the really bad management of the, of the government's money is to play in all of this because they have produced so much cash, they have produced so much uh, inflation that it's now, it's hard to, to kill it off. It's hard to kill off this inflation. So in summary, the report that came out says that analysts expect July CPI to rise by 3.3% year over year and 03 month over month with core CPI expected to rise by 4.8% year-over-year and 0.2% month-over-month. So that means that our inflation numbers are going to go up. That means that the cost of living for you and I are going to go up. Rising gasoline and oil prices in July could lead to hotter-than-expected CPI reading, potentially affecting August and September reports. Core inflation remains elevated, particularly in services, posing a challenge to the Fed and suggesting the need for higher long-term interest rates. So we have these issues coming, and you and I know that they're coming. We've been warned. I've warned you. So we have got to start really looking at how we're dealing with our own personal funds, our own money. Now, the other thing I want to talk to you that I want to mention also on the unemployment numbers the big numbers that they are suggesting went up are all service numbers. The hospitality, the restaurants, they are hotels. The, the, they are the low-paying numbers. They are the low-paying jobs out there. So that really does not help the economy. So you're looking at a person that's making 15 to $20 an hour, $25 an hour if you're lucky. And that doesn't help us. It's these other individuals who are making $100,000 a year, $200,000 a year, engineers, accountants, CPAs, attorneys, uh, analysts, healthcare. Those jobs are the ones that help the economy. Now, we're thankful for the jobs that are created because there are a lot of people who need secondhand jobs, which are a lot of you are doing. You're taking those hotel jobs. You're taking those jobs in restaurants. Because you need the cash. Okay, we're all cash poor at the moment. And so when we do that, that makes the unemployment numbers look okay, look good. Unfortunately, as you know, as you're getting your pay stubs, it's not all that good because of all the taxes taken out. And then that stupid inflation takes out money too because now your money that you're earning just is not worth as much as it used to be. So we are in a pickle at the moment. 
We are being lied to by the government every single day. The White House comes out and says the economy is strong. Uh, President Biden comes out, the economy is strong. Janet Yellen of the Treasury comes out and says uh, the economy is strong. Democratic congressmen come out and senators come out and say, oh, we're creating more jobs. We're, we're the economy is strong. In actuality, the economy is not strong, and we are still in high inflation, and inflation is growing. Individuals are still in debt. Americans are still trying to figure out how they're going to manage their cash flow on a monthly basis so that they can survive. They're still making those lunch decisions for their children, what they're going to send and what they can't afford to do. So we're still in the same pickle. It has not changed. So when you hear a politician, and and we're going to hear a lot of this during the election year, when uh, when a politician comes out and says, oh, we're doing so good, the American people are so much happier now because the economy is good, no. It's not, listen, I have people calling in here who are living from paycheck to paycheck and they can barely make it. So I hear from you and I know what's going on. I hear from my clients and I hear what's going on. So we have still an inflationary time in the United States and it's going to last a while. Now, if if Joe Biden would get off his ass and start letting the oil companies produce more oil, we could lower inflation significantly. If we can produce oil with much less cost to the American people, we could lower the cost on so many different items, on what's manufactured, on what's put into our cars, transportation of of, uh, airlines could go down. I mean, it could affect a lot of things to reduce that. But instead... Joe Biden says, no, there's not going to be any fracking. No, there's not going to be any more new oil wells dug up. There's not, the, he just say no to everything. Everything that needs to be done to help the American people, he is saying no. And he's doubling down on no. I mean, even if you look at our oil reserves, we only have 18 days left. I've said that so many times. You guys are probably getting so tired of hearing my spiel on this, but I just want you to understand the economy is not what the politicians are saying it is. It's what you and I are living in. And when you hear Diamond going out on the news saying that that, uh, the... Credit rating drop doesn't hurt us. Yes, it does hurt. Hurts us a lot. So we have a lot of bad management going on in businesses. We have a lot of bad management going on in the White House. But you and I, we've got to do our jobs better because we're being attacked by all sides at the moment by this economy and by politicians. And these politicians, I tell you, the more they talk, the worse it gets. Hakeem Jeffries, uh, uh, who is the minority leader in the Congress, he comes out every single day and lies and lies and lies to the American people and says that the economy is going grand, it's going good, it's wonderful. Peachy keen. And you and I can't even afford that peach. Listen, this is Mike Lodge, once again with the Business Advisor. If you would like to sit down with me confidentially and talk about business issues, Go to my website and schedule an appointment online at www.lodge-co.com. If you have a business question, send it in to me at thebusinessadvisor at zmail.com. That's Z with a zebra. Everybody go out and have a great day. It's Monday. Let's do it. We can do it. Bye-bye.